So this is the last lesson of Chapter 5, Lesson 8. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about factoring linear expressions. Before we do that, okay, let's take a look at a little bit of, uh, of the inquiry lab a few pages before Lesson 8. And let's see what we can discover from there. So let's look at this problem right here. Okay, Max has enough one inch square tiles to create a rectangular piece of mosaic art that is an area of 24 square inches. Some of the possible dimensions of the rectangle are listed in the table. Write the two missing possible dimensions. Okay, so basically what it's saying is that Max has enough tiles to create a rectangular mosaic okay and the area is 24 square inches that's the area okay and we need to understand that we when finding the area of a rectangle we do length times width and that's the reason why if you look at the table right here if the length is one if i multiply that by one that's given me it gives me 24. And those are the two factors of 24, okay? Other two factors of 24, meaning two numbers that you multiply with each other will give you 24, will be three and eight, okay? So we want to find two more factors, okay? And another two factors will be 12 and two. So basically the length will be 12 and the width will be two because 12 times two is 24. Also, another two factors that we can uh, write down for 24 are 6 and 4. So this is 6 and this is 4. Again, if you multiply them, it will give you 24. Okay. Now, why is the area important? Because that's in, that is also essential in understanding uh, factoring using algebra tiles. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this one. Use algebra tiles to factor 2x plus 6. Again, we go back to our algebra tiles. You have your x tiles right here, and you have your unit tiles right here. Let me go back to why they're called x tiles. They're called x tiles because the area is x. The length is x, and the width is 1. If I multiply okay, 1 times x, my area would be x, and that's the reason why it's called an x tile. Okay. On the other hand, if I have my unit tile, let's make that yellow. Hopefully you can see it. So my unit tile is one. Uh, let's make it a different color so you can see it. Let's make it uh, blue. So that's my unit tile right there. Okay. And the area is one. Okay, the reason why the area is 1, because the length is 1, and the width is 1. Okay, so because area of this one now becomes 1 times 1, which will give you 1. And that's why we did Max's example on top to find out the area of our uh, algebra tiles. So if you model 2x plus 6, this is how it looks like. You have 2x tiles and 6 unit tiles, 2x plus 6. Again, what, what we want to do is we want to arrange them, it says in step number two, arrange the tiles into a rectangle with equal rows and columns. The total of area of the tiles represents the product. Its length and width represent the factors. So what does that mean? So if you look at this carefully, if I make this into a rectangle, okay, fix this so that it shapes, it, it forms a rectangle, this is how it's going to look like. I, I, uh, I position my X tiles lying down and I position my uh, unit tiles next to each of them. Now, if you notice, it forms a rectangle. This is my rectangle. Now, how do I find my length right here? Now, it says here X plus 3, but how did you come about with X plus 3? Remember our X tile here? The length of our X tile is X. So this is actually X right here. Okay. And since the dimensions of my unit tile is one by one so this is one one and one i'm talking about the length of one side 
So if you notice, that's x plus 3 ones or x plus 3. Okay? Now on this side, why is it 2? Remember, again, we go back to, the, to our x tile where we have the width. Okay? This is the width, which is equal to 1. So in this case, this is equal to 1 right here. Okay? That is 1, and that is 1. Okay? And if I add 1 plus 1, I end up with 2. So the length of my rectangle after I arrange my 2x plus 6 is x plus 3, and the width is 2. Okay? Now those are the factors of uh, 2x plus 6. Okay? So those are the factors for 2x plus 6. Now, let me write that down for you. I have 2x plus 6, which is equal to x, or 2, which is the width, times x plus 3. Now, why are they called factors? Because you are multiplying the width and the length. Okay? So I have 2x plus 6 factored as 2 times x plus 3. Okay, so again, if we do this properly, this becomes now x plus 3 right there. So I just got that number from the example that we ju just did. Okay, let's do one more hands-on. Well, not really hands-on, but look at the, the, another example here. Use algebra tiles to model 2x minus 8. Okay, again, you have two x's, okay? two x tiles and three, sorry, eight negative unit tiles. So again, if it's negative, this is how it's gonna look like. If that's negative one, okay, this can either be one and negative one to give me an area of negative one, or I can do it this way. Again, the area is negative one, that can be negative one, and this can be one, okay? So that's the idea behind having a negative unit tile. Okay, so we model 2x plus negative 8. Okay, let me remind you again the reason why it's negative 8, because according to the definition of subtraction, this is 2 plus negative 8. Operation before the number is the sign of the number. So in step number 2, arrange the tiles into a rectangle with equal rows and columns. So we're going to arrange them into a rectangle, and this is how it's going to look like. So if you arrange them into a rectangle, this is how you're gonna, it's gonna look like. Okay, again, we lie down our, okay, X tiles, and we put our negative X tiles on that side. This is a perfect rectangle right here. Okay, again, how did we get to X minus four? Because the length is X right here. And the length of each side here is negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 1. Okay? So you have x and 4 negative 1s, which is the same as x plus negative 4, or simply x minus 4, according to the definition of subtraction. Same thing what we did on the side here, step number 2. Okay? On that side, that is 1, that is 1. Okay? So that is 2, okay? So the factored form of 2x minus 8, okay, right here. We'll get the width first, which is 2. And we are going to get the length, which is x minus 4, okay? Now, if you notice, if I use the distributive property, this becomes 2x, okay, minus 8, which is basically the same thing right there. Okay, all right, now we're, we've uh, done a little bit of the uh, algebra tiles. Let's take a look at how this works uh, with the lesson. So you doing the lesson proper, okay? Uh, there are two things that we will be learning about factoring, okay? The first thing that we will be learning about is how to find, okay? I will learn how to find the GCF or the greatest common factor 
of monomials to factor linear expressions. Okay, that's the first thing we're going to be uh, doing in this lesson. And the second thing is that I will learn, okay, how to model the factoring of a linear expression using algebra tiles, okay? So that's what we did on the inquiry lab right here. Okay, and that's what we are going to be learning. These two objectives we'll try to cover at the end of this lesson. Okay. So, let's take a look at the lesson proper. Okay, and let's learn the concept right away. And it says here, the first one, <clears throat> is basically find the GCF of monomials, okay? So before we even find the GCF of monomials, we need to understand what a monomial is. And let's define it. A monomial is a number, a variable. We defined it earlier, okay? But let's do it again or a product of a number and one or more variables. That's what a monomial is, okay? A number, it can be a number, it can be a variable, or it can be a product of a number and one or more variables. So let's take a look at an example of what a monomial is. This is a monomial, 25 because it's a number. A variable is also x, and a product of a number and one or more variables. Actually, x is a product of a number and a variable because this is 1 times x, okay? Not monomials are, are on this side. So when you talk about not monomials, we have x plus 4 because it is not a product, it's a sum, okay? 40x plus 120, again, not a monomial simply because there is the plus sign. It has to be a product, meaning we need to find the multiplication symbol or the operation of multiplication. Now, after uh, identifying what a monomial is, let's know what a factor, uh, what it means to factor. So what it means to factor, to factor a number, okay, means to write it as a product of its factors. Just like the inquiry lab, if you notice, we wrote it as a product of its factor, okay? A monomial can be factored using the same method you would use to factor a number, okay? Now, it's a good definition, but we need to see it in action, okay? Another term, another uh, sentence that we need to talk about too is the greatest common factor of two monomials is the greatest monomial that is a factor to both a lot of mathematical terms, and we'll understand what those mean, okay? So first, before we even uh, dive into example number one, let me just give you an example of uh, greatest common factor, okay? So when you talk about greatest common factor, if I ask you what is the greatest common factor, or what is the GCF, of let's say four and uh, let's say four and twenty five four and let's do ten. There you go. So again, to be able to find the GCF of four and ten, we write down the numbers vertically four and ten, and get the prime factors of two of four, which is two times two, okay? So prime numbers, again, remember what prime numbers are, numbers that 
have only two factors, one in itself. So the prime factors of 4 are 2 and 2. Prime factors of 10 are 2 times 5. Okay? So, again, we go back to our factor tree. That's how you factor 4. Then, that's how you factor 5. You circle it when the numbers are prime. So what you do next to find the GCF, we simply circle the common factors and bring it down one. So bring that down once. And this now becomes our greatest common factor. Okay, so the greatest common factor of 4 and 10 is 2. And if you notice, if this is a fraction, which is 4 over 10, since the greatest common factor is 2, we simply divide this by 2. Divide this by 2, we end up with 2 fifths, which is now the simplest form. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a review of what greatest common factor is. So let's find the greatest common factor of each pair of nominals. Okay, we have 4x and 12x. We want to find the greatest common factor of that. So for us to be able to do that, let's take a look. I have 4x. And the prime factors of 4 are 2 times 2, like what I said earlier. And then we simply write x. So we write it as a factor. Remember, 2 times 2 times x are factors because they're all multiplication. If I get 12, okay, how did I get the factors of 2, 2, and 3? I am simply do my, okay, factor tree. Any two factors of 12 except for 1, so I'll do 2 and 6. Okay, 2 times 6 is 12. Since 2 is prime, I circle that. 6 is not. 2 times 3, that's how I got 2 times 2 times 3. And then I simply include x at the end. Then after that, I circle the common factors 2, 2, and x. Okay, and I bring them all down. Okay, so I bring them down once, 2 times 2 times x, which is now, okay, 2 times 2 is 4, and bring down the x would be 4x. So the GCF of 4x and 12x is actually 4x. Again, let me write that down. 2 times 2 times x is the same as 4x. Take a look at example number 2, 18a and 20ab. Again, we get the factors of 18a and 20ab. Okay, so prime factorization or the prime factors of 18 are 2, 3, and 3. Now, again, how do we do that? By using the factor tree, 18, okay, you have 18. Okay, get any two factors of 18, 3, and 6. Okay, that is prime. I circle that. 2 and 3 are not. I circle the both of them after that. Sorry, 2 and 3 are prime. And that's how you got 2, 3, and 3. And simply put the A at the end. Okay, 20 AB is the same thing. I use my prime factorization. Okay, using the factor tree. Any two factors of 20. Let's do 4 and 5. 5 is prime. I circle that. That means I stop the factor tree there. 4 is not, but 2 and 2 are. So that's how you got 2, 2, and 5. And then you simply write down A times B. Then you circle your common factors, 2 and A. If you circle the common factors, now you have K, 2A. Because 2 times A is 2A. So the GCF of 18A and 20AB is 2A. Okay? So again, this is 2 times A. Okay, number 3. Take a look at 3. 12CD and 36CD. Again, we get the prime factorization of 12 and 36. According to our factor tree, the prime factorization of 12 from the last example Okay, is 2 times 2 times 3. Okay, and then you just add CD at the end. 36, if you do the factor tree of 36 again, I get my 36. Any two factors of 36, I'll do 6 and 6. 
6 and 6 are not prime, so continue our factor tree. These two are prime. Circle those. Again, that's how you got 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, and simply add CD at the end. Okay? Then circle the common factors. Bring that down once, 2, 2, and 3, C and D. So what happens after that now is that if I bring down the common factors too, bring it down once, bring it down once, bring it down once, bring it down once. And then I multiply 2 times 2 times 3 times C times D. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. Okay, C, D. So the greatest common factor of 12, C and 36, C, D is actually... 12 CD. Okay? Try the guided problems and see if you understand examples 1 through 3. Okay? Now, let's use what we learned about greatest common factors and let's factor linear expressions. Okay? So, again, uh, a lot of this will not work without the property called distributive property. So, we will be using the distributive property and we will work backwards, uh, use a backwards strategy to express a linear expression as a product of its factor. Okay, a linear expression is in factored form when it is expressed as a product of its factors. Okay, good example of that is this. You have 8x plus 4y. Again, this is not in factored form because it's using addition. Okay, now if uh, I find the GCF of 8x and 4y, okay, and if you notice the greatest common factor of 8x and 4y is 4, so I can rewrite this using the greatest common factor, which is 4, so 8x is 4 times 2x, 4y is 4 times y, and using the distributive property, and I can actually take this out, so this now becomes, okay, 4 times the quantity 2x plus y using the distributive property. Now, if you notice, it's multiplication. 4 times the quantity 2x plus y. It is now expressed as a product of its factors. Okay, this one is not because there's an addition sign. You're multiplying this term, but you're adding it with another term. In this example, you have this term being multiplied by another term. Okay, big difference between this and that. So how does this work using models? We have 3x plus 9. Okay, let's use a model for this one. Okay, again, we model 3x plus 9. We know we first look at this from our inquiry lab. 3x plus 9 looks something like this. Draw my 3x's, 3x tiles, and I'll make my positive... These are my unit tiles. Make them blue so it's easier to see. Okay, unit tiles mean they're all one. So that is the model of 3x plus 9. Now if I'm going to arrange them into a rectangle, this is how it's going to look like. Okay, I those are my 3x's and I arrange them exactly to form a rectangle. If I find the length of my rectangle, okay, remember that this is x. And that's 1, 1, and 1. So therefore, this is x plus 3. On the side here, we know that this is 1, 1, and 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So this is simply 3. So using a model, we know that the factors of 3x plus 9 is equal to 3 times x plus 3, length times width. In method number 2, we will be using the greatest common factor method. Okay, use the GCF. Okay, again, we write down 3x plus 9, and we write the prime factors of 3x and 9. So 3 is, uh, the prime factor of 3 is 3. 9 is going to be 3 times 3. 
and if you notice there is one common factor which we can bring down so the greatest common factor we circle the common factors we bring down the common factor so the greatest common factor is three so if we write it using uh, the product of GCF and its remaining factors this is how it's going to look like I have 3x plus 9 again okay again the greatest common factor is 3 so 3x is the same as 3 times x 9 is the same as 3 times 3 using the distributive property I take 3 out and I leave x plus 3 inside the parentheses this is now the factored form of 3x plus 9 using the greatest common factor method okay let's take a look at number five factor 12x plus 7y again the first thing we need to do is find the gcf or the greatest common factor of 12x and 7y okay uh, by uh, by doing this we know we get the prime factors of 12x the prime factors of 7x so for 12x, it's 2 times 2 times 3 times x. For 7y, it's only 7 times y. Actually, 1 is not prime, so it's supposed to be only 7y. Okay? So in this case, there are no okay, common factors, okay, except for 1, that is. So there are no common factors except for 1. So 12x plus 7y cannot be factored. Okay? Remember when we talk about fractions, a fraction is in the simplest form with the greatest common factor of both the numerator and denominator is 1. It is also true for expressions. If the greatest common factor of 12x and 7y is 1, then it is in simplest form or it cannot be factored. Okay? So do the got it problems and let's see if you understand example number five. Last example is always a word problem. Number six, the drawing of a garden at the right has a total area of 15x okay, plus eight square feet. Find possible dimensions of the garden. Okay, so you have 15x plus 18 okay now first and foremost we get our 15 we want to find okay the factors of 15x we, we want to factor 15x with 18 because here this is our garden and that's 15x plus 18. so we need to find the greatest common factor by using the factor tree and finding the prime factors of 15 and 18. So for 15x, the prime factors are 3 and 5 in x. For 18, again, using our, our factor tree, 2 times 3 times 3. If you notice, there is only one common factor. Also notice that since even though that there is a 3 here, you only circle a pair. Okay? So you circle a pair. So the greatest common factor of 15x and 18 is actually 3. Okay? So that's the greatest common factor. Now, to be able to write each term as a product of the GCF, its remaining factors, we take 3 out, okay? We rewrite our 15x plus 18 to become 3 times 5x plus 3 times 6. Using the distributive property, this goes out of the parentheses. These two remain inside. Then you know how 3 times the quantity 5x plus 6. So the possible dimensions are 3 feet by 5x plus 6 feet. Okay? So that's the end of example 6. Do the last example. And then we are done with this lesson. Thank you for watching.